Hi, my name's Tom Lonsborough and I'm the Ableton Certified Trainer here at the Midi School. But um, today, Apple have announced and in fact released very quickly uh, Logic Pro X, which is the new incarnation of Logic. So, I have used Logic 9 in the past and a bit of Logic 8, um, but I actually have not used Logic for quite a long time in favour of Ableton Live, but I thought that I would install this on my machine and take a look at it. So what this video or set of videos is is designed to be is, with all due respect to everyone out there, an idiot's view of, of Logic Pro because I'm an idiot when it comes to using Logic. So what we, uh, and that's me and my colleague Matthias, have decided to do this evening is attempt in a very short period of time to write a piece of music using the new Logic Pro X software. Uh, and this will be, yeah, a very, very rough overview. And hopefully we'll show you some of the, the new features, although we've literally not looked at the manual. Um, and like I say, me personally, I've not used Logic for a very long time, so we're going to bumble our way through it. Hopefully you might gleam some some of the new features, some, some details from it. And if you're brand new to Logic and writing music, then hopefully this will be a bit of an overview of how to get started writing, writing music with Logic. So I've just opened the software, and as with the previous version, um, you get the option of either creating an empty project or some sort of template that has been um, pre-made for you. And these templates include a selection of tracks that already have instruments loaded on them, or in the case of, say, for example, a songwriter uh, template, there'll be perhaps one of the new Logic drummers in there and a selection of audio tracks prime ready for you to record onto. But we're just going to go Empty Project and click on Choose. So the first thing you'll notice straight away is it looks vastly different to um, Logic Pro 9. I actually really like the new look of, uh, of, of Logic. I think it's a lot crisper, a lot cleaner, and a lot less cluttered uh, than the previous version. That was one of the reasons that I switched over to Ableton Live was um, how uncluttered it was. But Logic have really, or Apple rather, really tidied up the, the interface. So as with the previous versions, we prompted us to what sort of track we'd like to make um, to start us off. You've probably seen software instrument audio on external MIDI before, but we've also got guitar or bass, which I think loads you up a new audio track and, and primes that for recording. And then we've got this separate track called Drummer, which is almost like having a session drummer in the studio with you. Cool. So we'll, we'll load a software instrument. So the inspector's still over here on the left-hand side, and your track list is still here. Um, the transport controls are now in the, in the bar at the top. Also, when you create a new track, you get the option, as with previous versions of opening the library, um, I've got that unchecked because more often than not, I have a couple of um, VST instruments and hardware instruments that I um, look at time and time again. So I never really use Logic's library, but again, part of the challenge is that we're going to just use some of Logic's um, new instruments and new presets. So I think this button will uncover the library. Yes, it does. So let's start off with some chords. Should we let's write some nice chords? We're going for we're going for something. Housey. Should we go for something housey? Right. Something housey, housey, right. So um, I'm going to select synthesizer. I see they've got specific EDM bass and chord presets in there. I think we're going to steer clear of those, but um, to each his own. We'll go for pad. And these are basically all the different presets for any of Logic's instruments that fall under the pad section of, of synthesizer. So we could do it this way. Let's um I take it that's probably modeled on a Roland Jupiter of some description. So I'm just going to click on that. And tell us what does that sound like, mate? That's pretty epic. It's not the release time on that. That's pretty epic. Um, maybe a little bit too epic for what we're doing. So um, let's have a look at Los Angeles 2019, which is probably going to be something Blade Runner, which will be even more epic. But um, I love that film. So let's have a listen to that.
Love it. Let's um, let's stick with that, and we can always just sort of tweak the the preset that's been given. Um, so let's just uh, exit the library there, and in fact, this preset is part of this new um, new synthesizer that comes with Logic. Now I'm a big fan of my old school analog sounds. So um, this what's it called? Retro synth. It's called. This is the new synthesizer that comes bundled with Logic. And it's a really simplistic analog modeling synthesizer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, again, this is the first time we've looked at this, so I'm just going to pitch it up by an octave. Mateus, if you want to just keep playing, and I'll... I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know what you're listening to this video on, um, but that sound coming through the studio monitors, that is absolutely phenomenal. So we're going we're gonna to work with that. Uh, I'm just going to tweak the preset a little bit, a um, little bit less attack time. And what's the release time saying? It's about two seconds, so I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. And... Yeah, let's, let's try and record something in for that. So I'm going to leave it at 120 beats per minute. Uh, I'm just going to set up a loop. Let's just go for... Let's go for an 8-bar loop. Um, if we look up at the top here, this will give me a counting, I suspect. Yeah, and here's the click. But just before we do some recording, let's just listen to see what that sounds like. That's probably not long enough. Uh, Matthias is an, a, an accomplished musician, so I'm actually going to give him another another eight bars. So I'd like you, Matthias, to record a 16-bar phrase. We're going to probably add a bit of sidechain compression, a nice 4-4 four, four beat under this, move on to maybe something arpeggiated over the top of it. So I'm going to hit the record button, and let's see what we can do. Remember... Just going to hit X, brings up Logic's mixer. Just click all here, and that allows us to hopefully see the click. There you go. So if you need to adjust the volume of the click, uh, then you can do so there, but that's loud enough for us. So um, I believe we get four counts, and then we're in. So I'm just going to hit record. Shortcut, I think, is R for that. Cool, there we go. So let's just have a quick listen back to that. I'm um, just going to double click the region to bring up the piano roll. Cool, so yeah, that's that's wicked. Just need to do a little bit of quantization on that. So 
just going to zoom in a little bit horizontally and let's select those notes I'm just going to drag those up so they start at the beginning and now I'm just going to click command A to select all the notes in this MIDI region and I'm going to select the time quantize value let's go for 16th notes and strength so this is going to decide, I believe, um, the strength of the quantization function. At 100, the notes will be rigidly snapped to the 16th. Values are less than that, and they'll be pulled towards the 16th, but they won't be rigidly snapped. And then you can also introduce a bit of swing as well. There we go. All right, so we're actually looking at an eighth of a bar there. So as soon as I select um, the... A fraction of a note here, it'll automatically quantize those notes for me. And yeah, that grid that we're looking at is in fact, in fact, oh, my mistake, it's a quarter of a bar. So yeah, as soon as we select those notes, as soon as we select the 16th, it's going to quantize them to the 16th. I've selected a different value. Just press the Q button, and it re quantizes those to the nearest eighth in this case. Now you'll notice that uh, this is brand new, scale quantize. So we can actually choose our tonic or root note and type of scale and any notes that we've played in will be snapped to the scale of our choosing, which is um, absolutely amazing. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Bit of a cheat, but uh, absolutely amazing. So uh, let's leave that as that for now. Just press P to come out of the piano roll. And let's have a new track added. So I'm just going to press the plus button again. We'll go software instrument again. And I'm going to go open library, create. I'd like to do some sort of arpeggiated thing now. I'm big into my arpeggiators. And I think Logic has, have a look, it's in the basics. Logic has a new arpeggiator device. That was always my gripe with older versions of Logic. You had to do some crazy stuff in the um, in the environment window to, you know, get an arpeggiator working. Whereas now I think they've got a dedicated MIDI um, device for that. So classic analog arp. Why not? Let's just click on that. I'm just gonna arm the track with the R button. Yeah, so again, it's, it's this uh, retro synth, this new retro synth plugin. So let me just, I'll tell you what, Matt, if you just play. Yeah, let's just, um, let me have a bit of a play around with this. So let's take a look at the arpeggiator plugin. Um, and if we just look at the inspector, just shrink that down a little bit. If we look at the inspector, you can see here is your instrument. Here's your audio inserts, audio effect inserts. And then up here, you've got your MIDI uh, inserts. So I've just double clicked the arpeggiator, which comes loaded as part of this. Um, part of this sort of channel strip uh, preset and this is what it looks like so let's just um, have a bit of a play around this I tell you this, if you just I'm just going to turn latch on so you can take your hand off
Let's have a look at some of the options. Now, note length on other um, arpeggiators, you might see that written as gate. So let's just turn latch on, Matthias. We can randomize that. Randomize the velocity. Add like a triplet time swing. Oh, this is pretty cool, this button. Now, if your synth is polyphonic rather than monophonic, I... You know, if you can play more than one note at, uh, at any one time, um, then the notes that you've had held down at this stage, rather than being arpeggiated, you'll hear them together. So notice where I've turned the, the this sort of chord button on. When the arpeggiator reaches that point, rather than stagger the notes, you'll hear a nice chord, and it gives you sort of well, just a different different pattern. And it's the first time I've seen anything like that on an arpeggiator, so that's quite nice. Um, so, let's just play something in that goes with, with these chords. So... Cool. Right, so I'm just going to stretch that first note out so it starts at the beginning of bar one. Command A. Let's just quantize those notes to the 16th. So, 